Hi, everyone. I'm Yu Feng. Uh, I'm the final year PhD students at UT Austin. So today I'm going to uh, present our recent work on programming synthesis for data wrangling tasks. And this is joint work with Ruben Martins, uh, Jake and Kevin, and my advisor, Isha Dilix, and Swaro Chahuri. So as you probably know that uh, data science is becoming increasingly more import, important in many application domains, such as uh, artificial intelligence and marketing analysis, uh, intrusion detection, as well as uh, recommendation system. Because of all those useful and uh, applications of data analytics in everyday life, most of people think of data science as very exciting and uh, very uh, cool uh, discipline. Despite of all those uh, glamours associated with data science, so in reality, most of data science actually spends a lot of time on tedious and repetitive tasks such as uh, data extraction, uh, data cleaning, table transformation, etc., etc. And a recent study shows that uh, data science spend around 80% of their time on this kind of tedious uh, data wrangling task. And one of the key reasons is that a lot of data science don't have enough programming skill to handle this kind of most of the library in data wrangling. So during my, the past few years, my uh, collaborator and I have spent a lot of effort developing systems to making programming uh, more amenable to a large class of uh, people, including security analysts and uh, programmer and data scientists. So today I'm going to tell you a system that can solve of many of uh, data wrangling tasks. Uh, in particular, I will describe uh, Morpheus, which is a component-based synthesizer to automate uh, real-world uh, data wrangling tasks uh, in, 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 uh, in, in, in our programmer. So as a user, she only needs to provide input and output uh, data frame she wants to transform. And uh, Morpheus can automatically synthesize an R program that performs this kind of transformation. And the transformation can guarantee that it is type check and it also pass the, pass the uh, input output constraint. So here I want to emphasize that uh, Morpheus is also a very general uh, uh, framework that can solve a lot of uh, uh, data wrangling tasks such as uh, table transformation, table reshaping, uh, data consolidation, et cetera, and et cetera. So before I jump into the technical details, I would like to start by giving a quick demo about the interface of Morpheus. Suppose Alice, a uh, data scientist, um, has the following input table, which contains four columns, okay? And she would like to transform the following uh, tape, uh, data frame into the, this output data frame. As you can see, uh, this transformation is not that true because it involves first uh, table uh, reshaping, and you also involve additional uh, data computation. For instance, here is uh, string concatenation. But with the help of Morpheus, she only needs to provide uh, input da uh, output data frame as an argument, and uh, Morpheus can automatically synthesize the program that take care of this kind of transformation. Okay. So at this point, I hopefully I I have convinced you that Morpheus is useful. So let me take a look at uh, online uh, synthesis algorithm and see how it works. So underneath the hood, Morpheus is a very general frameworks uh, for program that operates on table, and it can be instantiated into arbitrary, arbitrary set of components where each component could be a method in a library. Okay. And uh, here I want to emphasize that Morpheus is very general, and it can be uh, instantiated into arbitrary set of uh, components and depend on the task at hand. And in order to instantiate Morpheus, uh, we just need to provide the implementation of the components as well as the corresponding uh, specification. Where well, here the specification will all approximate the behavior of each component. So therefore, one of the key contribution of uh, Morpheus is we provide a novel component-based synthesis algorithm that leverage uh, in incomplete specification to prune the search base. Uh, specifically, why our core synthesis algorithm perform enumerative search um, over a space of hypothesis? We perform SMT-based deduction over the component specification to prune the search base. And we further perform partial evaluation to strengthen the specification of each uh, partial pro program to further prune more space. Okay? 
And at this point, you might have heard of the term uh, SMT deduction in many uh, other senses too. Here I want to highlight one key difference uh, between, uh, for, uh, between our two and previous work. Uh, unlike previous work like Brahmat and Synquic, which use uh, precise uh, specification for each component. So precise in the sense that uh, given arbitrary components and the input, uh, the specification should be precise enough to determine the output of each component. Whereas uh, in, for Morpheus, it can leverage with arbitrary set, uh, kind of specification as long as the specification uh, over approximate the behavior of each component. Okay. We believe that this feature is very important because in reality, it's very hard to write down a precise specification, especially in the context of data handling. Okay. Now I would like to uh, walk through the, the high-level synthesis algorithm that behind Morpheus. Uh, specifically, as I mentioned before, Morpheus uh, perform enumerated search over a space of hypothesis where each hypothesis represents the high-level structure of the component uh, uh, with all the missing arguments, okay? And then it will generate a hypothesis and send it to the SMT reasoning engine to check whether it is feasible to complete current uh, partial program. And if the SMT reasoning engine say this is no, uh, Morpheus will dramatically uh, prune search base because each uh, hypothesis right now will represent many concrete applications. Okay. On the other hand, uh, if the SMT reasoning engine say yes, uh, our system will keep going and filling the and complete the partial program in a type directed manner. And but here, as soon as we fill in one missing argument, we will try to partial evaluate current partial program to generate a stronger specification for current uh, partial program. And again, we consult the SMT deduction engine to check whether it is feasible or not, okay? And our system iteratively repeat this process until we found a program that are type check, that is type check and satisfy the input output constraint, okay? This is the big picture of the synthesis algorithm. So now I'm going to walk through uh, each part in a bit more detail using a simple domain in uh, SQL, uh, SQL domain, which is uh, easier to understand. Now let's get started with the hypothesis generation. As I mentioned before, each hypothesis corresponds to a partial program uh, that represents the high-level structure of a program, okay? And our system enumerate the hypothesis uh, according to a certain cost matrix, for instance, number of AST nodes or according to some statistical model. And for instance, here you, we can have a hypothesis which contain only the project op projection operator, where here uh, the, the question mark correspond to uh, correspond the missing argument of the table and the name of the column. Okay? And of course, the system can also generate other hypotheses. Here is another example. There is a composition of both projection and selection. Okay. So once we generate this hypothesis, we will send it to the SMT-based reasoning engine to check whether it is, it is feasible to complete current uh, hypothesis, okay? And then now let's take a look at how this deduction works. So in order to perform deduction, we also we need to compute the specification for current partial program. And in order to compute the specification for the partial program, we need to use the component specification that involve in current partial program. So here, for instance, uh, given this uh, partial program uh, that, we show, that we use uh, in previous slide, as well as the corresponding component for projection and the selection. As you can see here, this, the, the specification for projection is very easy to understand, but it, it actually over approximates the behavior of projection. It says that uh, when, you, when you operate, when you perform a projection on a table, so basically, your, the number of your column got decreased, whereas uh, your number of rows remained the same. And you got a similar specification for selection, okay? Uh, those, as you can see, that those specifications over-approximate the behavior of uh, the component. And once we have this uh, the specification for each component, we would like to generate uh, the specification for the current hypothesis. So essentially, what we do is we just need to conjoin all the component specification that involve in the current hypothesis uh, and perform necessary uh, uh, variable remaining. And as you can see here, we got the following SMT formula, which represent the specification of current partial program. And uh, in addition to the 
to the information of this partial program. As, as you can see that we also have the, the constraint from the output table uh, provided by the user. Here the constraint of the output table says that the output of this table T3 should contain uh, two rows and four columns, okay? At this point, if you send this uh, formula to uh, the SMT uh, deduction engine, it will say this is satisfied, which means that we can't prune this program yet. But if you remember that we also have the additional con uh, information from the, of the input uh, table from the user, which means that it says that this T1 is contained three rows and four columns, okay? And then if you dump in the, the following constraint into the current constraint system, uh, you will get a strong uh, formula, and then if you send the current formula to the SMT reasoning engine, at this point it will say this, pro uh, this hypothesis is infeasible, which means that we can reject current partial uh, program without filling any of the missing uh, argument. Know that this will dramatically prune the search space because in reality, each hypothesis can correspond to uh, hundreds or even thousands of concrete programs, okay? So this is one, one side when the partial, uh, when the SMT, SMT uh, deduction reject uh, the, the, the hypothesis. On the other hand, if it cannot reject current partial uh, uh, program, uh, our system will continue and try to complete the, the program in a tight directed manner. So in a sense that given a whole of the type T, we will instead a complete whole with any inhabitants of, of type T. For instance, if you have an integer, we will enumerate all the possible candidates that are integers, okay? So this part is very easy to understand, but as soon as we fill in any of the missing arguments, we will uh, partial evaluate current program. So by what I mean by partial evaluation, so suppose, uh, let's go back to the previous example, now I use a different input output table, but the same hypothesis, okay? Now based on this uh, partial program, we fill in the missing argument at the leaf node with a h greater than a, okay? At this point, if you, if you generate a constraint system for current partial program, we will get a huge uh, formula, and now I, I only show the, the important part that are related to, to, the, to, to this example. And then, as you can see that if you, if you uh, send the current formula to the SMT reasoning engine, it will say that this is satisfiable, okay? But uh, since right now, if you look at the node of this selection, so all of these uh, arguments are actually being concretized, which means that we can actually partially evaluate the result for this node and got a new table that corresponds to T2, okay? Which contain one row and four columns. And if you add those additional information to the constraint system, which is uh, based on the result of the partial evaluation, and send the same formula to the SMT reasoning engine. Now at this point, uh, the SMT reasoning engine will say that this is unsatisfiable, which means that right now we can reject current partial program without filling the rest of the missing arguments. Know that the, the, the combination of this partial evaluation and the SMT-based deduction give us further ability to prune more space, okay? So basically this is uh, all the technical detail that I want to go through. Now let's switch gear and move to evaluation. So specifically in the evaluation, we would like to answer the following three questions. First, can Morpheus like actually if, uh, automate uh, a real world data rendering task? And uh, the second, how effective is our smt based deduction and partial evaluation? Finally, we would like to compare our tool with a uh, state-of-the-art synthesizer. And to answer the first question, we collect uh, 80 benchmark from uh, Stack Overflow using the keyword tidyr and dplyr. And those are the most popular library uh, in R uh, for uh, data rendering task. And uh, we directly use the input output example, provide the original post from the Stack Overflow. And and for each benchmark, we run Morpheus on, on, on them. As, and finally, uh, as you can see, that Morpheus uh, automatically generates the program for 78 out of 80 benchmarks within a medium running time of around four seconds. This shows that we can actually use uh, Morpheus to automate real-world data rendering tasks. And second, to evaluate the effect of deduction and partial evaluation, uh, we use the, the following uh, figure, which is the accumulated running time of Morpheus under different settings. 
So essentially, what this figure means is that uh, how many benchmarks can we solve under a certain limit of time, OK? As you can see that uh, if you restrict your time within a limit of 1,000 seconds, uh, the baseline of Morpheus, which does not use any partial evaluation and SMT deduction, can only solve around 40 of the benchmarks. And if you use uh, SMT deduction but without partial evaluation, uh, the system can solve uh, around 60 percent of the bench, uh, 60 benchmarks. And finally, Morpheus achieved the best performance uh, by combining both uh, SMT-based deduction and partial evaluation together. And and last, I would like to uh, evaluate uh, what does our tool add over the state of the art. Specifically, since we cannot find uh, any existing tool that perform data wrangling tasks in the domain of R, we can't directly do the comparison uh, in our current benchmarks. But what we do is, because Morpheus is a very generalized uh, framework that can be instantiated into other domain that operates on table, so we instantiate our tool in the domain of SQL query. And in this domain, we managed to find uh, SQL synthesizer, which is a synthesizer that automatically generates SQL query from input of example. And we evaluate uh, both Morpheus and SQL synthesizer on their original uh, 28 benchmarks. And we directly use the input output example provided by their paper. And as you can see, uh, the result shows uh, that uh, why Morpheus was able to synthesize 97% uh, of the benchmarks in the SQL synthesizer, uh, SQL can only solve around 72% of the original benchmark. Uh, this experiment showed that an instantiation, an instantiation of Morpheus actually outperformed a domain specific synthesizer that only worked for SQL. Okay. So to conclude, um, we Present, uh, I present a novel component-based synthesized algorithm that leverage incomplete specification to prune the search space. And our system performs both SMT-based deduction as well as partial evaluation to prune the search space uh, by rejecting partial uh, program. And our system also passed the AEC evaluation. And feel free to download and give our feedback. So finally, I would like to deliver a one-minute take-home message by using a video from uh, our co-author. Okay, thanks for listening, and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. So, uh, just a quick question. How well does this scale with uh, respect to the size of the example? So, if the example were you know, instead of 10 records, it were 1,000 records. Oh, so uh, I think right now we can scale the example of size less than 100. Yeah. Because uh, that will affect the search space of the, when we perform the type directed completion to, in, uh, to fill in the missing arguments. So the, uh, the search space of those arguments are bounded by the, by the, by the, by the current uh, the intermediate table that's, uh, that that provided by the user. And if the user provide a larger table, can essentially uh, have more, uh, contain more uh, constants, our search space will, 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 be, will increase. But right now, you can only scale to a type of size less than 100. Yeah. So 
So um, what I was wondering is, I see that you use one example. Can you use multiple examples to help uh, uh, your search uh, for more precise uh, programs? Yes, that's a very good question. So if you look at uh, the formula that I show in the example, so our example actually does not, uh, our, our system actually does not bind, uh, tie to one pair of specific input output example. Essentially, you can think of the, each pair of in, in input output example is the additional constraint to the SMT formula. But of course, if you can provide more input output pairs, so the constraint system will be strengthened, which means that you will get, uh, we are very likely to get a precise result that's uh, close to the user intent. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, I have one. Just to connect to the previous one. Uh, so the question is, uh, 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 in addition to just having multiple examples, mm -hmm. uh, do you think you can adapt uh, Morpheus to uh, uh, do interactive uh, uh, search, very tasks, uh, uh, user questions? What would be uh, the next uh, st step to proceed? Like, oh, mm -hmm. so that's a very good question. So, so the answer, if I understand correctly, is um, right now it's kind of one 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 time deal, right? So basically, the user provides the input output example, and we generate the program. There's no further interactions. Okay. So one of the next step we are considering is uh, so basically, suppose uh, the user provide the input output example, and now we generate a program that does not uh, it passes the input output example, but does not the user's intent. So we would like to further to, to provide more additional information to the end user so that the user can, can give some hint about what are the likely examples they are missing in order to get to a program that are close to his intent, her intent. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.